Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we're gonna be finishing off the narration and character voicing series for the Dark Knight's memoir, side story in Arc Knights. And, uh, and yeah, on the last episode we pretty much uh, began where we left off with part one and that was literally at the moment where uh, uh, where uh, Enos and W were about to get pretty much slaughtered by their pursuers, but in the nick of the moment, their very own contract givers came to uh, save their butts in the form of Theresa and Kotzit, who <laughs> deployed themselves to the field alongside others, I presume. I think it's vaguely implied that there were others as well, but yeah, mostly those two, and they got their sorry butts out of there. And then we continue with the story on when uh, W wakes up on the very land ship that they were asked to ex uh, escort through the contracts given by them by Babel. AKA the land ship itself belongs to, to the organization Babel. And uh, a short little scene between Enos and W exchanging oh so lovely words with each other. Uh, we get to see W rummage around a bit through <laughs> this land ship and she starts meeting people we all should be very familiar <laughs> so far be it people who are experiencing this story for the first time through this uh series or uh or on their own or uh for people who are watching this alongside the main story that i'm covering on the channel um we do meet a couple of people that we do actually know from the main story. Well, W first runs into a small Amia. Chi child Amia. Very little. And I will go into a certain aspect about little Amia's design there, but very recognizable. Even if you don't know who, who it is, uh, when you're reading the story for the first time, when she appears and you see those ridiculously long bunny ears. Yup, Amia. Got it. And yeah, she already has... Uh, at least she has the neck ring. That's what I'm gonna point out so far. She at least already has that neck ring around her to monitor and uh, suppress oropathy symptoms. But yeah, continuing onward, we see W run into Theresa and Closure. Ah, <sighs> Closure, you and your scam shop. And yeah, she runs into them as they are trying to repair a door. Which they are not succeeding just as much as uh, the cast of Critical Role is succeeding at opening doors, I guess. And or closing doors. Uh, but, Theresa and uh, W share a little moment where they exchange words. Uh, w, I, lo I love W during that entire part. I, I'm just imagining during that entire section she's just like in that blank expression trying to <laughs> trying to figure out this person in front of her. And I love the moment where she just asks her, Can I just can I just laugh at your face right now? <laughs> that was beautiful. I love it. And then the moment passes and she doesn't get a laugh out. Also beautiful. Love it. Uh but we also see an interesting moment where W not face to face, but from a distance, runs into the Doctor. Yes, the Doctor, the very character representing us throughout the story. At least uh, from the moment they will reawaken in Chernobog without their memories. But this version of the Doctor is a bit different, and we get that notion the moment W locks eyes with that person and uh, she is uh, well terrified is a word I would like to use there <laughs> like oh god that, that was probably the first time ever she got literally scared stiff to not do anything anymore but yeah we proceed then a slight bit into the future after Hoder and Enos have left Rhode Island, or rather... Oh, yeah, 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 right, 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 I skipped over that part. In, in the whole uh, part where Theresa and um, W exchanging words, 
Theresa does, to does talk about the landship they're on and that she wants to call it Broad Island. She does heavily hint on the fact that the landship was not... Well, at least the newer parts now on the ship are being built and added on, but the ship itself was not built, but found. It's very old. On top of which, uh, Therese apparently did a lot of research to dig out its uh, oldest name that she could find, which is Rhode Island, and she does want to name it that, and we do know it's gonna be named that in the future. Uh, but yeah, fascinating. More on that in future stories. Uh, but yeah, later on in the future we see W skulking around the land ship. She is pretty much <laughs> idolizing Theresa at that point, just skulking around trying to get a paparazzi, <laughs> paparazzi selfie with her, I guess, from the distance. Kelton berating her. Magical moments, I love it. Uh, but yeah. Enos and Hoarder have left Rhode Island at that point, or rather Bobble at that point, and uh, they're still receiving contracts for them, from them to at least make some buck off of everything. Some of their mercenaries stay behind, with the inclusion of W, because they're all pretty much joining under Theresa. But, as we see later on, tragedy struck, and the very things that have been also a bit hinted at, heavily hinted at, at uh, in the main story and pretty much said, I think, at certain points. Uh, Theresa dies, she gets pretty much assassinated on, on the spot, killed, basically not assassinated, just literally killed. Uh, Bobble pretty much suffers a lot, and uh, the Rhode Island landship, together with potentially Kaltzit, Amia, and uh, well, at least with Kaltzit and Amia, escapes and vanishes somewhere. While the Doctor's whereabouts are unknown, we do know what happens, at least where the Doctor will end up through the main story so far, but more on that later. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, W goes around and pretty much slaughters every single little shit uh, who was responsible for Theresa's dead death. And we get to see one of those executions of her which is, uh, <laughs> that was quite a conversation between those two. And at the end, they do get, re she gets rejoined by Ines and uh, Horror. After which, they uh, have an exchange and they decide to head out to uh, the Ursus Tundra to meet up with a certain movement that has started to gain traction. And that is the Reunion Movement. So yeah, this is the point where they, where at least W goes to Reunion and starts to interact with them more. Including Ines and Horror, which we're about to see how, how will that evolve for future purposes. But yeah, final one, final part was literally just a little bit where they were waiting out a catastrophe storm. And I do love that little moment where... Uh, Ines is commenting on how crazy W is becoming and how more and more unhinged she is becoming because, especially because of after Theresa's dead. Uh, after Theresa's dead, she she pretty much went even more nuts than uh, than she was before. Uh, but yeah, she, she does describe her very aptly as she's not just a storm; she is the freaking catastrophe herself. <laughs> pretty apt. <clears throat> Pardon. Pretty apt uh, description there of W, I would say. At least of her personality. But yeah, today we're gonna finish off this story with the last two pa which are, with the last two stages, almost said pages, uh, of this uh, little story. So let's begin with the story on stage seven. Two parts from now on for the last two stages. We will have the bonus stage as well, which is in the EX stages, which is a, quite an interesting view on W. Uh, but we shall begin here at the M7, titled Cracked. Let's begin with the before story. <clears throat> 
You, I've seen you somewhere before, comrade. We've met on the battlefield before. Hey, you shouldn't have come to Chernobog. Everybody here has the intel on Rhode Island. You're all going to die here. But no matter how good you are, you shouldn't have been able to get through W's defensive line. Not unless... By the looks of things, she ended up making that choice after all. In fact, we all expected it. Hmm. Some of you fought with us side by side. Theresa was an exceptional leader. She changed the way many people see uh, this patch of dirt. But it was an idolized viewpoint. You don't need to argue with me. I know better than anyone the, cur the cruelty that Castle has faced, nor do I want to deny her. But for such a tremendous effort, I want to see some semblance of results. Only by the Regent's hand can a new future come to Castle. There's not enough goodwill to go around for everyone. Uh, we could have tried to work together, or at least so that we don't have to die together. A naive notion. How are we supposed to set aside our years of discontent as Sarkas? How are we to write a long history of wrongs? Ursus and the Uninfected, Reunion and the Infected, Kazdal and the Sarkas. It's all the same. I became more convinced of it during the time I spent working with Reunion. His Royal Highness, the Regent, can open a new home for us, and I've chosen to chase this opportunity. Just as in the past, you still naively cling to Theresa. <sighs> That's enough. Since W decided to let you through, you must have also paid the price. What did you give up? An underling who died to buy you time, or maybe your own soul? Tell me the name you go by now. Scout. It's been a while since I've heard that name. Originally, I wanted to carve your name onto this knife as a show of respect. Stop resisting. These 12 other members of your team have been annihilated. Leafa, Mimi, and Tomtak died after being surrounded by reunion casters. One died on her feet. Mary, Macron, Slink, and Scorpion held a section the W broke with her own team. Milim, Tipsy, and Mudflower took one of our teams down with them. One of them fought her own way out of the trap. But Holder Swordsman got to her head. Unexpectedly. Uh, by the way, if someone can clarify, is this actually supposed to be Pter? Or or is that a type when it's supposed to be Peter? I'm just gonna go with Peter here, because Pter is very weird to pronounce. <clears throat> Unexpectedly, Peter died downstairs over there not too long ago. Apparently tried to save some civilian who didn't have time to evacuate. Slana's still breathing and we took her in, but she's probably looking for some way to kill herself. What? Nothing to say? Stop hiding. I know you can hear me. I can see your shadow and I can tell from your ragged breathing that you're badly wounded. Huh. Why do you know their names? W told me specifically for the occasion. You guys keep some kind of dog tags on you. At least, you have to know who you killed. This isn't Kazel anymore. I'd be bad. It'd be bad if you killed the wrong person. Those iron dog tags and the operators we lost weren't all soldiers. I thought W would finish me herself. Hm. She... Would you believe me if I told you that she doesn't have the heart to do that? You killed the leader of that that regent sent, she's not the only one who wants to take over, so she has her hands full. Like the agreement you had with W. As soon as you complete your mission, we'll annihilate you with all our strength in hindsight. <laughs> During the firefight you even took the time to rescue someone, but that's not any of our business. Patriot is over there, so there is no need to bother with that. Good. It all changed. W was uh, 
Not the kind of person to go out of her way to remember the names of the dead. Yeah, she did change, but she's only more become more of a lunatic. Your experience on the battlefield is pure, like Faust's arts. Who's to say that this wasn't just a ruse to trip you up? What if she only brought down their names so I could toy with you with my arts? That sounds like her. She would never miss an opportunity to have some fun. Same with you. Didn't you also agree to this crazy deal that only W came up with? Trading my life for an opportunity and then letting those two sh uh, those who should take the opportunity follow through? There is nothing crazy about that. Just like those who sacrificed their lives, they died for their own ideals. Without them, I cannot succeed. It seems like everyone's changed with the passing of time. You too. You never would have given your enemy time to breathe, like you're doing now. Hoarder should have warned you. What? Why are you still resisting? He's gone. But don't think you can get away so easily. This way? Hmm. No doubt, this is the way. He's fast. Tricky bastard. If he wasn't injured, I might have not even been able to keep up. Wait. He... He's heading towards the middle of the city. That's where... Damn it. What are you after so close to the city, core city? Why can't you just get out of Chernobog? You really don't act like a circus at times, Enos. I never was one. You should keep pretending that you are. You are a circus mercenary, and that is the battlefield. You can't even run anymore. You've lost too much blood. Your head is spinning and your limbs are going numb. Your shadow is only... The only thing still burning, you shouldn't even be able to stand. I'm well aware of my own injuries. Besides, this place is crawling with reunion. But for the lot of you, you, Horror, and also W, I have a suggestion. For Her Majesty's sake, use those eyes of yours to see the truth and don't die in vain before that. We Sarkas should not allow others to continue to use us. Are you talking about my arts? What am I supposed to be seeing? Hmm. What? This? Who is this? Why? Hmm. Sarkas? Mm. I impossible! She saw me? Now's my chance. Long time no see. Ugh, you? So you're alive? Mm-hmm. I've been following you this whole time. I figured Edis would al would not wouldn't be enough to handle an elite like you. The price to pay for this information is your life. And though we never planned to show any mercy, I didn't hope that you would. But now we can't give you any more chances. You're too close to the core city. W doesn't want anyone poking around over there. Heh. <laughs> Sounds like she's the captain now. You... always... Um, sorry. Sleep now, old friend. You should not stay here. I know, old friend. I've known that all along. Hoarder! You hesitated back there. Why? Hurry. We need to let W know immediately. S she's coming. <laughs> Poking the hornet's nest. <clears throat> All 
Alright, continuing with the after stage story. Dalula changed. The first time I met her, the feeling she gave me was just like that of Her Majesty Theresa. But Her Majesty has always been tragic, burdened, and she knew more about the secrets of this land. Dalula is different. She is wrathful, but just calm enough. Still, a zealous anger burns within her. Though they were different in many small ways, they had the same kind of strength. Or maybe people like them are similar in many ways regardless of their strength. This anger gave rise to reunion, which attracted countless followers. But soon, she changed. Our daily work has turned into incitement, provocation, destruction. This is no longer a revolution for the ma masses of infected, but rather the same kind of over-engineered conspiratorial war that we have been, that we have seen in Castle time and time again. She hasn't caught up yet. If we really run into her head-on, there's going to be trouble. You shouldn't use your arts on Tallulah. This isn't the first time either. We must always be careful of what we see. Something must have happened to Talula. We have to tell W. We've got a lot of heavy suspicion of us thanks to W's little plans. Do you want to make things even worse? What exactly did you see? The old Talula was just a rebel. She freed the infected and gave them an opportunity to fight back. But now, there is no effort made to curb their base desires. There is only mindless destruction and killing. That doesn't prove anything. That's how the other races have always treated the infected. They're not like Sarkas. You don't understand. The behavior by itself isn't a big deal, but I'm talking about the consequences. Talula, she's sabotaging reunion on purpose. Why? Don't you think the situation feels familiar? She is an excellent leader who can rally other infected into battle and win. But she is only one who could dismantle the very tower she built, piece by piece, totally undetected. I could even say, Talula herself is just a slightly fancier brick, something that can be crushed at any time. Are you saying that? It's just like three years ago, but he, he might have always been like that. He did it all without hesitation. He was just good at hiding it. Talula isn't like that. She changed. Her change was too sudden. Her shadow. It's as if there are two shadows, but I see no traces of arts. It's more like a set of ruins, ancient and imposing, still full of lingering power. The nature of your arts is very special, but your feelings are too vague this time. And I can't base my decisions on vague feelings. But W needs to know. Quiet. We've already been noticed. Anything we do can be used against someone else. You understand this, yes? Do you think we can survive a second bubble incident? I'm not sure. I know W can't. I'll go find her. Garson is dead, so she should be the new leader. Wait, if the Lula really has her eyes on us already, if you do this. I can't wait any longer. Don't give me orders. We're still the same rank. <laughs> I say that, but this is the first time I've dis disobeyed your orders. You shouldn't always overthink things. Order. Dowell, well, you should be right ahead. Once I cross this alley... Isn't that the base camp? What is she doing? Anyway, I need to hurry up. <laughs> Who are you? Infected? What do you want with me? Watch your tone, devil. First, a few mercenaries, uh, mercenary teams defected, then enemies started showing up in the city. Your bunch has made too many mistakes. Did you really think our leader hasn't noticed? 
Out of my way. I have... Uh, I don't have to listen to your whining. You have to answer to Tallulah. I know. After I report to W, I will then report to Tallulah. There is no need for that. That's not the kind of answer we need. What? Tch. Are you serious? We got attacked, and the fighting spread over here. Enos, one of the mercenary team leaders, is dead. You're not going to identify the body? The fighting was pretty noisy. It's drawing a lot of attention. Blow the whole street now. Got it. Wait a second. Reunion also needs people who fight like her until the very end. I understand. Take care of my family. They're still back in town. Of course. I promise. Make his corpse look a little bit more... Yeah, just like that. W will notice soon. Let's go. Uh, not letting order follow turned out to be the right call. <laughs> Turns out they decorated the streets of Chernobog with birch trees. <laughs> it looks like just like that old place with all the shadows weaving together. Alright, moving on to stage 8, titled Separated, Before Story. Months ago, after contacting, contacting Reunion, 10.14pm, clear, horses, unnamed desert outskirts. You've met all the reunion leaders. What do you think? Are you asking me or her? If you ask me, I'd say nothing out of the ordinary. The stuff they do is pretty par for the course for people like that. A strange bunch. There's a child who seems to be pur purposely pushed into that position to the point of becoming cruel. And then there's a warrior whose toughness is beyond imagination. There are some incredible people, but then there's also some two-bit two villains. All I can say is, we've seen all kinds of people after fighting wars all these years. But there is someone who caught my eye. Oh, you must be talking about that one. The one who was waiting at the side with uh, that li other little rabbit. Their squad seems seemed on a completely different level compared to those ordinary infected. That kind of Sarkis warrior can be said to be truly to truly bear the mark of war. Sarkas? Yeah, but you don't see Sarkas like that every day. He claims to be with Ursus, saying he broke off contact with Castle long ago. How pitiful. He never needed to live such an exhausting life. Maybe we should all go meet him. The impression I got from him was that he has become much more than a warrior. And you, don't you love uh, thinking about things instead of philosophies, philoso oh Jesus Christ, words, philosophizing, why not have a chat with someone like that? We might all learn a lot from him. You're talking about... Pardon, I would like to speak with you alone. Speak of the devil, what's up? To who do I owe the pleasure? My name does not matter for the time being. Rest assured, right now I am not here on behalf of the leader. I just want to hear about my countrymen, about my homeland, what has become of them. I know that in Kazdel, many things happened. 
Some things I have heard, but details, no. You're just an Ursusian. These two identities do not conflict. The bloodline has not changed, dark and deeply rooted. I care not for it, but run from it, I cannot. So, even if I told you, what do you plan to do? These things happened a long time ago for me. Nothing. There is nothing I can do. But it has been so long. Since I saw Theresa. Oh. From your reactions. I see. She is with you. Her mark is here. After all, you are Sarkas. Muddied. Blood soaked. She is a hero at least. So respected. A great warrior. A worthy ruler. My flesh loyal to Ursus. From my people I exiled myself. But I am still Sarkas. I want to know what happened to her Kazdel. I just want to know. <clears throat> en route to Chernobog. 522 AM clear. Chernobog, Sarkas mercenary garrison. Hmm. Need something? We hope that you mercenaries can give us an explanation. First, your team defected. The people who went after them reported back that you weren't even trying. A few hours ago, some enemies managed to infiltrate Chernobog, again due to your negligence. Combined with the fact that we uh, that when we first captured Chernobog, someone tipped uh, us off that you let Okay, okay, I get it. The client's dissatisfied with our performance. Can you say that uh, with fewer words? We're simply in a cooperative relationship and I'm the leader now. If I get on this table and start groveling, will Talula be happy? Or did having Papa Patriot around give you the illusion that Reunion is actually good at fighting a war? Make no mistake about who the people actually capable of bringing you victory are. Hmm. If you figured it out, hurry up and crawl back to the dragon girl. I'll tell her what she wants to know soon enough, soon enough, so don't rush me. There's one other thing. Just now, stragglers from an enemy party were de de detected inside the city. The mercenary, Enos, died after exchanging fire with them. Reunion also participated in this battle. The enemies were ve very strong, and we all suffered losses. This is all due to your negligence. There's no need to get pushy with me. Seems like something happened to the east of here not long ago. Precisely. So, where's the body? Unfortunately, I have bad news. I'm talking about the enemy's corpses. Enos wouldn't be wouldn't use such flashy destructive arts. Our casters were also involved in a battle. The entire street was destroyed. Don't you think you're being a little too blatant here? I don't know what you're talking about. So, from your side's point of view, how should this situation be handled? Our main force is focused on the battle that uh, will take place in Lungmen. We have no time to waste here. The leader won't investigate your responsibilities in ju uh, this just yet, so... You should handle it yourself. Hmm. You have a pretty thick horse's accent. What of it? You guys... Didn't really think that I'd take some random excuse, did you? W, stop. Put that wand away and calm down first. Sorry, got a bit carried away there. You can breathe a sigh of, re sigh of relief first and be grateful that you get to live. 
What's the meaning of this? Don't get me wrong. If the deed of uh, the death of one Sarkis would affect the outcome of the next battle. And neither will the death of the entire reunion movement. If you don't believe me, you're welcome to try me. I'll make sure our leader hears about your true attitude. There won't be a next time. You heard him. Since you let the Island Squad escape, Reunion has never showed allowed us to act alone. If they could put this much effort into their actual battles, they wouldn't be getting their asses handed to them so badly. Despite that, you still deliberately let the traitor's blade master get away. I didn't deliberately let him go. I just didn't want those uh, idiotic infected to kill a circus I brought here. The old you would have slaughtered Flamebringer on the spot to get Reunion's attention off of you. Regardless of what you wanted. Eh? Was I the only one who couldn't remember his code name? How embarrassing. Yep, Flamebringer, the very same Flamebringer that we know from the roster. <clears throat> hmm. Huh. So, is Enos really. Now is not the time. She. I'll have someone identify her. Identify her. Let's talk business first. Three things. First, Enos wanted to warn you that something was wrong with Talula. She must have seen something more specific, but I'm not clear on that. Also, she told. Uh, she told me. Is that a typo? Also, she told me, uh, Talula apparently had two shadows. From her reaction, this isn't some common byproduct of art's interference. The damned coward. Why wouldn't she ever be straightforward? Second, the old man has left, received an order to go fetch something. Talula didn't even make, an, uh, make any efforts to hide it. Hmm. Finally... A messenger has already set off for Victoria. Shortly, the region will know everything that has happened here. Theresis sh uh, knows many things, and he has just as many monsters around him. If he is allowed to invest intervene, this would no longer be a simple question between Reunion and Ursus. Hmm. W, are you listening to me? Too noisy. It's it's all good news anyway. Let me have some peace and quiet. You've had your hand on the hilt of your blade ever since you walked through the through the door. You were like that when we first met, as if you were ready to cut me down at any moment. But the way you stayed calm the, back there was just like patriot. What do you really think about this? That's not important. And none of us are. We all know this, and bad habits die hard. Ines, she... I have the right to hear what she said, right? In order to respect her sacrifice. You two are both similar, never considering the consequences of the things you do. The region will not sit idly and watch them lose control. If you can't give him a suitable answer, Londinium summons will destroy everything you've painstakingly put together. Ironically, I still don't know what you're trying to accomplish, even now. Who knows? Just don't think you can handle everything alone, W. You'll come to regret it sooner or later, just like me. The reason you have the right to ask questions is because you're awarded the center of the Verpool. Really? Who's still left on Rhode Island now? Why aren't you why are you asking that? I've seen your interaction with the messenger. You've been investigating Rhode Island's trail. That drug company. I had assumed they only got caught up in the war, but turns out the truth isn't so simple. Especially Scout. According to your plan, we were in charge of all the other fronts during the battle to hold Chernobog. Yeah, and you guys did a great job. But someone still found him. The ghost of Babel. You chose to find to find him yourself, and then you let him go. 
In the past, I would have seen this as a sign of untrustworthiness. But by the looks of things, you didn't plan to keep that secret for long anyway. Eh, <sighs> what point is there in hiding that? If you've ever fought in a battle, you're, you've, uh, you're bound to know some people who have a bit more of a reputation. After all, if those people have been uh, fighting tooth and nail to hang on, there's no getting around it. What's your plan now? We shouldn't have had to fight against them in the first place. If that Kaltzit is still in charge of Rhode Island, this might be a chance. Now, what do you think my objective is? I see. You said you helped me do this one thing. We agreed on it. These honest mercenaries are worth just as much as dead mercenaries, so I don't mind making some extra arrangements. Enos can no longer help you. And soon, I'll have to leave too. Oh, I haven't heard about this before. Where to? I'll head back to Victoria with the messenger. It'll be about a three or four month trip. We'll leave tomorrow morning before sunrise. Are you in that much of a hurry to reunite with Enos in death? With your reputation, you're, you plan to head back to Londinium carrying all that the sin on your shoulders. You'd probably be better off uh, fleeing back to Castell. You killed Garson and uh, reorganized the mercenaries. Someone has to report this to the regent. If nobody goes to report this, he'll treat us like disowned children and cause and cast us straight into the next war zone. A battlefield within his reach. When that time comes, there really will be no place to run. You're talking. Uh, you're taking this risk to cover from me. Why would you do that? Her Majesty Theresa. She remembered my name and my family. Though Her Majesty is no longer here, there is a part of her left in this piece of shit, no good squad. How come I've never seen it? Hmm. No matter how perverse the Sarkas's personalities and methods may be, judging from the results, they're. Still fighting for that lofty, unrealistic idea. Do you even know what you're talking about? We've known each other for a long time, W. That's all. Out of compassion, let me also give you a reminder. This is your best opportunity to escape Kazel. We from here pass Lungman and Ursus to the distant lands beyond. I'm willing to keep one eye closed. But if you go back, know that you will die. Huh. Just earlier you said you wanted me to help you do your thing. If your idea of helping me is just committing suicide, then I suggest you hand over your life instead. When it's my turn to collect, I'd like some of my debtors to be still alive. I wouldn't necessarily I wouldn't necessarily be going there to die. Depending on the regent's mood, there are many possible outcomes. Reunion has been manipulated into something far beyond what you can imagine. The region may well change his mind. In any case, I no longer have the luxury of running away. I've left Kazdal, and I'm about to leave here. What's the worst thing that could happen? Patriot has already taught me enough. <coughs> mm, pardon? <clears throat> You've been influenced by him a lot, just from your short time here. Just like you were with Teresa. It's all the same, isn't it? Theresa sits on Theresis sits on his throne. Even if I'm only able to growl my way up there with my head pressed against the ground, I must reach where he is and figure out what he is thinking. Otherwise, if we continue acting recklessly as we are now, that will truly be committing suicide. You know, you could also just submit to him. I've thought about that before. Just so you know, Garson was always suspicious of you. He even gave me the order to kill you, once. Oh, sounds like things wouldn't be a bit more entertaining if you had listened to him. Sorry, but I'm not into the same kind of stuff you're into. Now, let's decide. Hmm, I won't deny that I'm curious about what Theresis is up to. Seems like I have no choice, though. 
that's right. Even if you rejected my proposal, I don't plan to let you keep running the show. You're not gonna say that. This is for my good, right? Of course not. What kind of sarcas goes around taking care of others? How disappointing. You've just gone right back to your old ways. I thought you were going to keep falling. So, do you already have a plan? Why don't you go ask Enos? That's a really unfunny joke. Then before I leave, let me tell you another joke. Enos once told me that you looked more and more like a lunatic, but your actions got less and less decisive. Oh, me? Do you really believe that? Have I been using fewer bombs recently? Maybe. No matter how good you might be at hiding it, we've worked together for too many years. Who's to say? Maybe we trusted you this whole time. Hm. So, which line was the joke? Oh, it's you. Sarkas mercenary hoarder, huh? I heard you were leaving. What business do you have with us? Before I leave, there's something I'd like to confirm. Did any of you personally see Enos fall in battle? No. As soon as we received the support request, the battle was over. The street had been torn apart and the originium crystals uh, left by the catastrophe caused a violent chain reaction. We got the situation under control with fairly minimal... What are you doing? Ursusian, you're pretty calm for someone who just saw a companion fall in front of your eyes. Hmm. You've given off the stench of conspiracy and war, a stench that is all too familiar. If Venus was still here, that's definitely what she'd say. So that's what this is about. It's all too co common for people to vent their anger on the infected over a fallen comrade. I just thought you would have been a little more smarter than W. A little smarter, huh? Yeah, looking back, I've been a bit overprotective of her. Always have been. But not because I was afraid she'd get in trouble. You see, I was more afraid that I'd have nobody to kill. After all, I'm also a Sarkaz. The real deal. You... <laughs> One pissed off hoarder coming through. Alright, and we finish off here. Yes, finish off here, despite there being one more uh, cutscene in the EX stages. But this story will for now end here, and the cutscene in the EX stages will be sort of a little bonus. So let's begin with the after part for stage 8. <clears throat> and before someone says anything because of the white horns and the white hair, no, this is not shining. <laughs> Just to be clear. <clears throat> I have seen your report. Your achievements with Reunion are, to say the least, not worthy of commendation. However, that being said, you have indeed procured some unexpectedly useful information. Thank. No, there is no need for thanks. At least not this time. You are all impressive warriors, and until your deaths, you are entitled to the rewards you've earned by virtue of the blood, sweat, and tears you have shed. His Majesty the Regent knows well the acts and the deeds of all Sarkas, even those as insignificant as yourself. The infected are not the only thing in this temple gradually depreciating. Do you understand? I do. Hmm. If I am correct in my predictions, Rhode Island has already welcomed the return of a certain un palatable individual. Talking about W. <clears throat> 
And you, you should have made contact. Hmm. The region is even faster than W, all the way from Londinium. Mercenaries know loyalty only to their own interests, but that nonetheless makes a fine starting point. When the dust settles, and you stand once again before the throne of his majesty, that is when you will receive your reward. And what about the other warriors? The young infected has her own plans. Were you unaware? But his majesty will not participate in such nonsense. We have mutually decided that Victoria will stand by and watch Reunion's next move. We lack effective measures to retake control of that unit from W. Furthermore, it is important that we, in the name of our supporters, continue to whip up the infected in all corners of the world. We're still going to use Reunion. I was sure His Majesty would have... Given up. Oh my, no, young mercenary. Things are yet far from chaotic enough. Even if Reunion has strayed from its leadership, it remains a source of chaos. What's more, should your words just now be taken as a question of His Majesty's intentions? No, absolutely not. Very well. Raise your head. Oh, yes. For the time being, you need not return to Kazdel. The journey back is too long, and matters have been progressing rapidly there. You are to stay here for now. Enjoy this small respite however you can. Thank you very much. Now then, his majesty awaits me. You are dismissed. Remember, see to your own business first, order. Of course. Order, yes. I look forward to seeing what else you uncover. Huh. Looks like, looks like it's house arrest for both of us. It's not like I have thought about it. And hey, it's better than I was expecting. But we were a little too naive. Which part was naive? The part where you thought you'd die or the part where you thought the region didn't know? Both. He's been pulling the strings from the start. Not that I'm surprised. He's Theresa's. If all heard the stories about him and Theresa. The invincible forces of nature. But I guess in the course of the war I forgot those stories weren't just stories. So how do we warn W what's going on with Reunion? We wasted so much time on the road she might have already split with the Lula. The other possibility is the show ends in Lungman. Wouldn't that be a bit too quick? It fits with the way W works. If Tallulah is gonna destroy the infected, W will destroy Tallulah first. Sarka style, with extreme prejudice. She's pretty upset over the death of a certain merc after all. She knows the score. She's out of, she's out of room to hesitate any longer. Now she just needs to get into the right headspace to make a move. And that me means we're left waiting. We've got ways to fool the region's eyes. I'd, it'd be crazy risky play, but I've still got my own squad I can keep on standby. Victoria's all over the place right now. They probably wouldn't catch the code. Yeah, and I would have to pass by some real tricky spots controlled by the regent. And on to Kazdel. Kazdel! The battlefield ruins there weren't, uh, haven't been touched in a long time. But we eked out a living there for a good long time. There was a communication station in an old bunker buried under those ruins. The tower made it look like it was destroyed, but everything down there still works. Hold on, that was a long time ago. 
How long have you been preparing for this? All done way back at the very beginning. Cost me a pretty penny too. <laughs> oh man, if they saw the look on your face right now, both would... Boy, would they be surprised. For a while now, every time you come back from a battle, you were always deep in thought, like a kid who did something bad. I figured you just lost your will to fight. Nah, it was the opposite, actually. I finally realized what it was I had to do. How? Because I had no choice. It's kind of liberating, in a way. Nobody must have said something to you before you left Chernobog. Does that sound like her? Laying all the cards on the table? Nah, she'd be uh, less of a pain in the, uh, if she did, though. You're right that she came looking for me before I left the core city. She knew what we were going to do. She... Can you put a price on the life of a merc? Sure, always have. Why even ask? You knew the answer. But who set the price? The war itself. Sure, you got your battlefield honors, your victories, the glory... You put all, you put, you pull out of a head-to-hand -hand fight. All the things that raise your profile. Then let everybody know what a useful tool you are. So boring. But that's all in the past. At least for us it is. What do you mean? Every Sarkas merc should have a nice, clean price tag. But we don't need anybody to slap it on. No oversight. They write their own price in the blood of the enemies of Sarkas. You... are you saying we should get everyone to leave Kazdal? You look surprised. But, like, they could choose for themselves. Does this sound weird? Hmm. Not weird, right? Just give it some thought. Think about what you could be doing in Kazdal. You're talking about doing that right in front of the Reese's in broad daylight. You make it sound so bad. As if you don't have your own plans. Chill, you are my boss hoarder. You'd better do it, or we'll have trouble. That's a pretty good joke. The old, ha the old hands at the scar market would laugh themselves into a coma. It certainly wouldn't make the committee happy. They'd be out a lot of money and a lot of wasted brain power. Not to mention all the people they killed. Sure enough, and the old hands here too. Some of them are almost friends of ours. So, what are you gonna do now? It's up to you. Well, I can't leave Londinium. Hell, I can't even leave this mansion. I think it's up to you. You can do a lot as a messenger. Keep following Tallulah's orders. Order isn't coming back yet. Should be good. As long as that com, com station still works, we'll, herb, we'll hear back and they'll get word to W. Hmm. I know how to do this. Don't give me orders. Oh. It just clicked in my head. I'm an idiot. Don't give me orders. That was Ines. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm leaving this part in. I'm not gonna go back and record that. <clears throat> that was Edis. <clears throat> right. Right, 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 right. Didn't even click with me when I read that back then. <clears throat> <sighs> what a pain in the ass. Just when I decided to go after the dragon lady. What a time you picked. Get out of here. The ruins of Chernobog weren't like those of Kazdal. There were still traces of life out on the streets, ravaged as they were. They gave you some idea of what had been. Unlike the total annihilation back there. Like for example, those two kids. Kids painstakingly raising their weapons. Devil, what are you doing here? No, don't provoke her. Sorry, we were just leaving. Hey. That's an army sword you're holding, isn't it? 
Yes, it is. Suck a steel. You can't even lift it. Why are you hauling that thing around? You're gonna fight back. You're gonna kill me. <laughs> Get back. Ah. Rubel, your leg. Oh, you're hurt. You're gonna get infected. The city got hit with a catastrophe. It's not safe here. I won't turn into a thing like you. Aw, what a tough kid. Let me ask you. Do you know what it means to take up the blade of a fallen Sarkas? Alright, and this is where this part of the story ends. We, like I said, do have one more part here in the EX stages, which is, at least from what memory serves me, a pretty rare thing for EX stages to have, like, bonus scenes, but this one does have a bonus scene. And when I'm done here, I'm gonna do the usual of, uh, sort of like a review for this whole thing. Plus, I have one other bonus thing that I want to share in this recording very quickly before I do that. Uh, but yeah, I am. I feel like such an idiot I didn't realize that the two people who are talking there, um, right after he, right after Horder meets with the uh, commissioner, uh, is Enos. It didn't click with me. <laughs> wow, it didn't click with me probably because I was so focused on voices. Uh, when I was preparing for this narration and it only clicked with me now because she literally just says don't give me orders which is like her catchphrase towards him uh, but yeah that's Edith if it wasn't clear already from a line before that she is very much alive uh, but yeah let's keep that for the end of this recording for now we're gonna go over this little <clears throat> uh, story here called Beg for Mercy. To her child she spoke, to herself she spoke. This will be a quite an insightful look into this person's brain. <clears throat> You're still pushing forward. Without treatment, you're definitely getting infected. Why would I believe a devil? A devil, huh? So many devils around me all the time. Sometimes I forget we even have that word. <sighs> Stop following us. I've been keeping my distance. And stop acting nice. If you're gonna kill us, just do it already. Uh, Rubel, you really shouldn't provoke her. Okay, we're, go we're going then. Ignore her. Uh, sorry. I don't care if I get infected. We don't need a devil's, a devil's help. Um. Uh huh. There's an abandoned hospital around here, Chernobyl District Hospital. Wanna know where it is? <sighs> Rublev. Don't listen to her. She's trying to trick us. Let's dish her quick. See that alley over there? Take that corner, and I think you can get there in less than a minute. Uh, okay. Run! They're fast. How did she catch up to us so quick? Ah! Uh, the rope of your leg, the, the blood is turning black. Ah, uh, I could have outrun her if I didn't have to save you. Uh, sorry. Whatever, just be quiet. Don't let her find us. Hmm. Head down that street, turn left, and you'll come to a ruined plaza. On the west side, that big white building, that's the hospital. The abandoned hospital. I think she knows we're here. Because you don't listen to me. <laughs> Fine. Hey, devil. Why did you tell us that? Felt like it. How do you two know each other? I found him when I, uh, while I was out looking for food. Uh, Rubel saved me. And that's why you do what he says. 
Hmm. No skin off my back, whatever you want, but now is not the time for you to help out your savior there. What? What are you gonna uh, make him do? Rupert. Nothing. I tell you, there is a hospital right over there. I mean, reunion is dumb, so they wouldn't waste perfectly good medical supplies. So if you want to save your little pal Rubolf, you're gonna have to steal. It's a bunch of infected thugs over there. Thugs who murdered your family and friends. And that's the only place they'll have the drugs that can stop the onset of oripathy. So, go steal, rob, loot. It's all good. Just don't expect anybody to help you. No, don't listen to her. But, but, no. He knows your name, Rublev. Do you know his? What does that? What does that have to do with anything? Don't go. You can't do it. There's too many. I. I want to try it. Rublev isn't the only one who got hurt in the catastrophe. There's so much pain. I. Why aren't you listening to me? I. He doesn't have to listen to you. It's good that you want to save those uh, those people. Just keep that hospital in mind. They keep the supplies down in the underground storeroom. You could get it through the vents in the parking garage. You could get in through the... Uh, through the... Ugh, Jesus. <clears throat> you could get in through the vents in the parking garage, go through... Or through the sewers, as long as there's not too much toxic waste down there. You could die there. Uh, die there, though. Come on. Your legs are shaking. You can't do it. We were dumb to even listen to the devil in the first place. Let's get out of here. I... <gasps> what? What was that? Some things went down in Lungman. Wipe some stuff. Uh, wiped some stuff out here too. Why won't you folks... Why wouldn't the uh, folks have their eyes on a perfectly good battlefield hospital here in Chernobog? Why do you think a devil like me would know that hospital so well? Because you... Um... Uh... I... Uh, that must hurt like, like a bastard. I'm starting to he think he's probably beyond help at this point. If you don't act soon, you might just die right here. Uh, you are... What are you doing? Stay away from me! To go? Oh, not to go. Oh, but what if it's already too late? Even if you did go, there's a riot going on. It might be too hard to sneak in and grab the goods. I'm, I'm going. Yeah, you're dead. Why are you still listening to her? I'm the one who saved you. But I want to try. There's no way you can do it. We'll go to a drugstore. We'll find some food. That'll be enough. I'm sorry. Hey, wait! If he knew his name, maybe you could call out and stop him. Kinda sad. You... You tricked him, you devil! Tricked? I haven't told a single lie. But hey, whatever or not you believe me, that's your call. Whatever or not you believe him, that's your call too. I... I'm going to find him. Mm. Why? He can't do anything without me. You're scared he's gonna run away. You're thinking, why did he leave you alone with me? With the devil? I'm not. Suka, a monster like you. Shut up. Wait here for him. Don't move. Or I'll kill you. <laughs> Who do you think I am? I'm a killer. I'm the killer who destroyed the city, hurt your parents and friends. <laughs> That's right. I forgot you had that blade. Look, it's got a sarcas charm on the hilt. And it's still bloody. Whose blood do you think it is? I... I don't... No, you made him... Go ahead and cry. Kids can cry. It's all up to you. Whether you live or die. He he can't do it. You sure? If 
I hadn't dug him out of those ruins, he'd already be dead. He needs me. Hmm. Nope, nobody needs anyone. Nobody does. This ruined city got quiet again. There's a lot less resistance after that slaughter. That's a good thing. Less effort. Less death. But it's quiet over at the hospital too. Nothing moving over there, as far as I can tell. He... he didn't... Huh? Maybe he didn't actually go. It's been... <clears throat> so long. He ran away. But you saved him. Wouldn't he want to save you too? I... Or maybe you were strong enough to save him, but you couldn't save... But he couldn't save you. He... He can't do anything right. Like when we went through... Uh, went looking for food, he couldn't even tell there was someone else in the store. It's all his fault my leg got... Hmm. Where are you going? I... I'm going home alone. I already told you, you leave and you die. But he already ran off. Huh. I can see it in your eyes. You hate him. N no, I don't. But if if he did go, it's been so long, he must be... Hmm. Shut up. You won't know anything until he comes back. You can sit here thinking he's coming back or that he's not. But if you're thinking that he, uh, he's not, if you're doubting him, hating him... That's on you. But you went right to thinking he blew it and ran off. Why? Because you saved him. Because you're the strong one. Okay, child whimpering, not gonna do that. <clears throat> Can't do that. Child crying, can do even less. <laughs> you're still strong enough to cry. Settle down, give it a minute and you'll be in too much pain to cry. You're young. You're not Sarkas. So if you can't take it anymore, you can tell me. I'll end it for you. Still crying? You're... you're losing consciousness. Oh well, guess he won't make it in time. No, he can still... I'll wait for him. You've got faith in him again. That's because you're scared to die. Kids are a good judge of character. You won't get, it, you won't get this kid uh, kind of stuff out of me. <sighs> but he's definitely taking way too long. Got maybe 10 minutes. Don't worry. If it comes down to it, I'm not gonna let a kid die in pain. Can't even whimper anymore, huh? What are you thinking? Do you hate me? Or him? Or maybe you hate yourself for sticking your nose where it didn't belong, saving that kid and getting yourself hurt. I don't... You sure? So you can still talk, guess I misjudged you. Look, Rubolf. What do you think it is that medicine... Uh... Mm, sorry. What do you think it is that decides what a person's gonna do? Is it a nature or, nature or nurture thing? When they're born, how they're born, what kind of baggage they're weighted down with? Nah, none of that matters. It's the whole complete sum total of influences on his life. All those changing thoughts and beliefs. And just how strong he believes in those beliefs. You saved that kid, but you didn't really trust him completely. You looked down on him because you saw yourself as his messiah. But him? He's easy. You saved him. He wants to save you. When it comes to this stuff, he's stronger than you are. Keep the blade. It's a Sarkis blade. So I'm allowed to stand in for its owner to give it to you. Wave it around. Learn to swing it. Sell it for cash. Whatever. It's yours. That's the deal. What are you talking about? 
Rubuf, are you okay? Look, I did it. I stole an entire box of medical supplies. Painkillers, bandages. Rubuf? Keep it down. I'm not dead yet. Uh, okay, let me bandage your wound. Uh, uh, how do you use the bandage? I is this the Rippafy medicine? I'll open it. Aren't your parents doctors? Oh, they never taught me anything, but I'll try. You got hurt? I'm fine, just a scratch. Somebody hit me with a piece of metal. Idiot. <laughs> Where's the Sarkas? Oh, I didn't see her when I came back. Did she stay with you? R R Rublev? <laughs> Sam, um, what's your name? Uh, oh, uh, Andre. Your whole name? Andrei Fyodorovich Ostrovsky. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You finally asked, Rublev. Sorry. No, no, you don't have to apologize. Alright, how do you feel? Better? Great. Let's get back home. I'll help you up. The grown-ups will be very happy th about this box. I smiled watching those kids. If they were going to survive, they had to kill that seed of doubt. You only suffer if you survive. Like a moth to a flame, a worm in a hole. You have to chase something, even at a cost. Isn't that right, Talula? And this is pretty much where it ends. Now, before I do my usual thing here of just talking about this story in general, like a sort of review, I want to go over something. And, uh... Rereading through this, even though I recently did a file narration of this, this made me realize something. Because I couldn't back then figure out who the hell is talking in this promotion record of, uh, uh, of W. But now I know. <laughs> now it actually makes sense. Because it's W and, uh, and Enos. Basically, at some point, they will meet again. When? I guess we'll have to see. But I'll just add this here, because it's pretty much part for the core of this story, so... So, you didn't actually... Death is a great way to get people off your trail. It was his idea to sneak out and meet you here, and that's all. So, when do we go back to Victoria? Wouldn't want to keep our usurper waiting. The situation in Victoria is a lot more complicated than you think. Don't have that much info on Theresis, you know? Still not enough for you? Maybe for you, but for Rhode Island? Not even close. Do you want to get everyone killed? Fine, fine. Since you're so eager to give this a try, I thought you... Oh, did you just want to get help? Uh, go and help that guy? I want you to... Sit quietly for now. It's not time yet. Oh, in other words... Hmm. How about that? To think we'd get all of these clues about Londinium just by hanging out at Rhode Island for a bit? How could Kalti be that unprepared? You've done your homework, so stuff like this happens. After all, you also get along as so well with the doctor. Picked your interest, huh? Not really. I'd like to head back and see Ascalon if I get a chance. Are you going to Rhode Island yourself? Sure am. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do next. So try your best not to die in vain. Not to die when you leave Victoria. We still have a lot of unfinished business. It's okay, don't worry about it. 
we'll tie up all our loose ends. <laughs> you better uphold your end of the deal. I'll be waiting. So yeah, I just want to quickly add this little section here. So this is a segment that has not, at least from what I'm aware from just memory, happened yet in the main story. Now I obviously don't know if this will happen in the uh, soon-ish to be added chapter uh, chapter 10. Uh, but we'll see, I guess. I did say in other parts that I'm looking forward to see W reappear again in this story. Considering after chapter 8, not really a spoiler, but after chapter 8, chapter 9 is literally introducing a lot of new elements to both the both the new region and uh, new characters and antagonists and shit, so it's not very focused on uh, actual Rhode Island personnel that we know of, but uh, yeah. But in general, this story... Oh boy, what can I say about this? Well, first off, amazing little view into, well, a character's personality in general but also giving a lot of um, details about the past of Rhode Island in general. Like, I don't think I have to go into details about W and her personality, and uh, it's pretty... I would say at least it's pretty self-explanatory how she is as a person, uh, just from going through the story, especially including that little side story... well, side story, the little extra scene with the two kids where she's basically egging them on to realize that life, <laughs> while it's pre pretty d dank way of seeing it, it kind of is the truth if you just think about it. Life is suffering and you just keep going and you're searching for those little kernels of uh, happiness and you keep collecting them. I'm paraphrasing that now. Anyway. Um, but yeah. Fascinating story, uh, very, at the end of it, can only say very happy that both Horter and Ines are alive. But the question is, when are they gonna pick up? And judging from the little section that I just read at the end there, Ines is definitely coming to drop by Rhode Island. Now the question is, will she become an operator or not? Well. As this game's MO is to to become an operator, the character needs to A accept a contract from Rhode Island to do well jobs for Rhode Island. B has to go through a shit ton of screening by Rhode Island. At least from a canonical way of uh, looking at it. But C, from both a canonical way of thinking of it, and um a writing aspect, the person needs to be alive. <laughs> That's the biggest aspect here. The characters who are in the roster have either been pushed into becoming uh, Rhode Island operators to help other people out with it. Mudrock is a prime example of that, who is a... and we don't see her in the main story, but Mudrock is a ex-reunion uh, just like WX Reunion, um... Was she a leader? I can't remember. I think she was one of the minor leaders. I, Jesus Christ, I can't remember. But yeah, she, she was not... At any point, I think she doesn't... I can't actually know, never mind. I can't remember right now from the top of my head. I can't remember if she appears anywhere in the story, main story at least. Uh, but yeah, she's X Reunion and she is part of Ro Rhode Island because of her own very circumstances. W becomes the operator, obviously, as she is in the roster. Um, but why and how? Well, we will soon see that when I start next week to cover slowly uh, episode 7. Time to face the Patriot. And my god, it's been so long. And uh, the, the first time when I read this story, this was uh, I pretty much... I remember back then I didn't have much time, so I really just speed s speed read through everything, and I completely up until preparing for this very this very recording, 
completely forgot that Patriot <laughs> appears in this story. I completely forgot and that caught me off guard. I was like, ah, oh, shit. Well, I was hoping to have a little bit more time to practice his, like, voice lines through, uh, through the main story, at least. But I guess this was a dry run of sorts. Hopefully that sounded okay. I really don't know how to properly voice the guy, considering he... Because of how severe his oripathy is, which we have been told by... Um, so far by uh, Frost Nova in that one little scene when she and Doctor talk, how how progressive his fucking oripathy is to the point that his throat is being um, well squished and everything else. That guy. The story of Chapter Seven will will cover how um, how much of him is actually <laughs> infected, and oh boy. It's a, it's a percentage, all right. Uh, but yeah, coming back to this story, uh, the characters are great. Uh, I love both. I love the dynamic between all three of them. Having the calm and collected, straightforward person. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> the only way I can s describe her is very Tsundere person, being Enos. But, again, like, like, like I, I think I said this in another part, uh, I, I love how the, the typical, like, in this case, like, Tsundere aspect of a character is literally just that. It's literally just one trait of the character. This is not who the character is. They are not one-dimensional. You get to see, as the story progresses, more and more and more of them. But that's, that's her baseline, essentially. And I love the dynamic between uh, all three of them. Like I said, uh, W especially. W's first appearance from being sort of calm, sort of only, only a bit of a lunatic, and then losing the very person that was most important to her, going completely cuckoo. But still, as we see at the end, she's still calm and collected to some aspect and i do love that the story essentially even though it starts off a, f a very long while into the past pre pre uh pre bubble downfall and uh theresa's death and all all of that it does catch up back to the very beginning of the main campaign actually as we've seen on stage seven it actually does get to that very same point. And I love that in this story, actually Enos does the thing where she looks at Talula, and the story so far has also, like, like this very thing here, hinted at the fact that something is wrong with Talula. Especially, I think chapter 6 is the one where uh, you get a slight look and they make it very obvious that something is wrong or that something is different very different with Talula uh, when you see I think it's the, in the Mephisto and Faust scene when the, the two of them meet I think it's in that specific cutscene when they meet Talula in the past that that moment is pretty much just a black screen and it could be like oh they just didn't design didn't want to use the the current version of the character yada yada could be but they deliberately ch chose a completely black screen and uh, the lines that she says to them even though it's a very few lines the lines sh that she says then feel very different different to what we know so far through the story where she keeps talking very rigidly and to the point so something happened something is different and Ines here very well said, Why are there two shadows? What is happening? It's not arts. Something's very wrong with the Lula. Uh, but yeah, another point. Uh, and this is not the first time I've seen, or the first time you can see this version of Amia. Amia as a child is has a very interesting detail to her design. And I wonder if it's just made because 
that's how they wanted to avoid so showing it's definitely it's definitely a made to uh obscure something from view and what i'm talking about is her eyes like they went out of their way to des to design a model of a child version of her but we know how her face looks like we know how her eyes look like so why in this past version of her do they made it so that you cannot see her eyes that is an interesting thought there and that originally as well or rather not originally uh when i read through this 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 very question popped into my head when i was reading through uh, a operator record from shit is her name savage i think her name is savage the, the bunny chick with the with the hammer uh she has several uh operator records and one of them considering she worked with Rhode Island before uh, before all, all of the shit went down or rather bobble whatever uh, she was with them for a solid year and in those scenes you get to see also small Amia but also her eyes are covered it's the same they're using the same model again but that's when when the thought occurred to me like it's literally just making the connections of hmm why would they hide her eyes, considering we know how her eyes look like? Uh, it's 100% her, considering everything else fits. The only difference is that she has, <laughs> while she has very long bangs to hide her eyes, she does appear to have shorter hair back then, in general. Uh, in her normal art style, her hair, while tied into a very long thing ponytail in the back, does go into like a blue and red tint now i don't know if it's actually that way or if it's just a design choice who knows i guess we'll see in the in the actual anime when it comes out potentially next year uh <clears throat> and uh yeah several other things i want i wonder why i wonder if that is gonna be explained if they're gonna actually at some point show her again in her young model but what's wrong with the eyes because there are definitely a shit ton of things about Amia that are not explained and as are about a lot of other things as this is one of the stories like many many other stories in this game who um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for who just keep building up the mystery around the f and yes I'm gonna go with one of them as a character the four characters that are like centerpieces of this entire story that being obviously the doctor amia cults it and rhode island itself there are a lot of stories and soon one of the stories will be um will have a rerun i b believe which is uh, a walk in the dust and that one goes uh deep into cults its cults its lore and background at least it will cover a bunch of years pri prior yeah mostly prior to Rhode Island and um, very fascinating story and I believe that story on itself will also build up a bit more about the mystery of what the fuck is Rhode Island where did that land ship come from who originally built it uh, one other thing to that piece and it is literally why I for you guys who are still listening here and are following this story along with the main story but don't know how the main story ends yet just wait until chapter 8 is fully done and then either by yourself or here on the channel go and uh, go and go through the Vigilo series uh, that explain mostly takes place after uh, those first eight episodes of the main story and uh, will cover a part of the trip between Lungmen and uh, Kazimir. And uh, during that journey, it is mostly... Th that whole miniseries is pretty much focused on the Doctor. It's pretty much focused on the Doctor, uh, a bit of his past, and the final episode is just like, okay, what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> kind of deal. So I specifically don't want to because that final episode kind of... Spoils a certain thing from 
from uh, episode 8. So if you are listening to this, just just, just wait. Just wait with the Vigila series. Just wait with, with it until episode 8 is done. Or if you already know what episode 8 contains and how it ends, go and rewatch that thing or watch it now if you haven't already. Because that was some uh, very interesting stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, interesting. Another interesting aspect of this story is uh, W and her uh, murder spree against everybody who uh, was pretty much responsible for Theresa's death. Uh, and I'm pointing this one out because of the fact that like, I think it was already hinted at, at in the main story, or literally said, I can't remember now from the top of my head, but the Doctor is pretty much being blamed for her death. How specifically? Not really covered, not really explained, but he's being blamed for it. Or rather, they are being blamed for it, but they don't remember what the hell happened. Because amnesia. Because something else happened to them. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, well, um, what, what was it again? <sighs> Brain. Brain overloaded right now. Uh, yeah, 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 right. In the main story, we already seen it. She was, like we see here, she was on a murder spree to pretty much kill everybody she holds responsible for Theresa's death. But in the main story, and this happened very close to the beginning of the story, when she meets the Rhode Island crew, aka she meets, amongst others, she meets Amya and the Doctor, she doesn't kill the Doctor right on the spot, even you would, even though you would expect it to happen after reading this. Like, why didn't she kill that person? Well, two things. Something with Amya, which will come in later, uh, but, which is interesting considering she was pretty much just Every time she was trying to look at Theresa and Amya was in the way she was telling her, shoot, <laughs> from the distance, of course, but she was just telling it to herself, like, shoot, go away, go away, bunny, you're in the way. But yeah, interesting, mostly because of Amya, but be also because, as we've seen in this, uh, this story throughout, she isn't just a one-sided character. Even though she's completely nuts at this point, she isn't just someone who's gonna fucking pull the trigger on, uh, on, on the other unless there is uh, a reason to it. Even though she does have a reason to kill the Doctor, when she meets them later in the future, the Amnesia version, she doesn't know what to do, essentially. Because the person she hates is not there. This is a blank person. Why am I pointing this out? Because of, in this very story, the very first time she meets, or rather sees the Doctor from a distance, it is very descriptive of their meeting. Or rather, meeting, put it in quotes. She sees them, and the only way I can describe it at that point is pure terror on her part. Because of the way that person looks back at her. Because that person back then doesn't see her as a person, but as potentially just a pawn on a chessboard. Kind of deal. There's a certain different atmosphere between old Doctor and new Doctor. And we do see that quite a lot. The Doctor so far... Again, for people who have followed this story so far on the main... Uh, on the main narration series. The Doctor has literally evolved from the very beginning of the story up until where we are right now, at the end of episode 6, going into 7. The Doctor pretty much became their own character, which is amazing and I love it. So we'll see how this keeps going into the future, but yeah, I think I've rambled here, here long enough. Overall, the story is the story is very good. Uh, I love all the moments between the three characters, their banter and uh, the little showcase of both uh, old Babel slash Rhode Island, or later to be Rhode Island. 
and then uh, a bit into the future and uh, showing potentially a meeting between the three sometime down the line. When it will happen? Who knows? I just know I will be very, very, very happy. Very happy when it happens. But yeah, anyway, I think this is enough. I'm already stretching this way too long. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm rambling, I can ramble for hours apparently. <clears throat> but yeah, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this final bit of the narration. I hope I didn't <laughs> ramble on for too long here at the end. Just wanted to get some thoughts from the top of my head out there. Uh, probably also misremembering some parts, but what, look, there's a lot, a shit ton of stories here. And I, this is not the only story I'm reading every day, so. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of those thing, things will get mixed up. But anyway, I hope you all have a fantastic day wherever you are. And uh, next week we're going to start with the next part of the main story. A couple of mini things and over the weekend is probably going to start a new uh, new side story. A new fresh side story in Arknights, which I will cover with uh, a narration series. So please look forward to that. But in the meantime... Like I said, hope you have a fantastic day wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, bye-bye.